What's up, YouTube? So I was on my way to pick up my son today from practice, and then I just started having these flurry of thoughts that I wanted to share with you. And I don't know if I've said this enough, but have I let you know that I appreciate you? You all are so absolutely awesome. I love the community that we're building. I love seeing um, you guys not only comment on, on the content, but actually engage with other commenters on the content as well. And I'm not just talking about the trolls and stuff like that, but I, I love the camaraderie and community that we're actually building in the comment section on this channel. So I did want to, want to say that, um, in this little brief conversation today, we're going to be talking about how my interests were impacted by religious superstition and how that has changed on this side of things. All right, so before we do, you kind of know the drill. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, consider uh, joining our community, consider volunteering in our community, check out our merch, and share this video. Um, anybody who you think this video will be valuable for, why don't you go ahead and give them direct access to it? And of course, you can use it to troll people too. I don't mind. All right, so let's kind of jump into this. The big idea here is that I realized that my interest prior to deconverting, deconstructing, and all of those, those great things were heavily governed by my religious superstition. Now, my public interests have been liberated. Um, what I realized, though, is that um, my interests were really governed by three aspects of, of my relationship with superstition, and that was the calling of God, the leading of the Spirit, and my commitment to Christ. So first and foremost, as a minister, and then uh, later on as a pastor, the things that I was publicly interested in had to be things that fit within the paradigm of what is acceptable for ministers and pastors um, in whatever sect, branch, or denomination you're a part of at the time. Because if any of you did any little bit of traveling, you'd realize that from group to group, these ideas could be vastly different. Um, some of you have learned about me that I am, um, that music is a major part of my life. Um, but as a minister and a pastor, I could not be publicly interested um, in R&B music or publicly interested in hip hop music. I had to keep those interests kind of within myself or it would damage my image or my reputation or people would think, think bad things about me. And so during that time, I, which I, you know, and this is why I say public interest here, because I still remain privately interested in those things. Um, even so, so uh, going so far as to work with other people, collaborating uh, and ghostwriting uh, for both uh, R&B projects and rap projects, right? So I got to do a lot of that. Now, none of that that actually went anywhere for real, for real. But I did do those things. But it was it was a, it was a real struggle because I had to kind of do those things in the background, you know, and I had to be very selective about who I could talk to those things about because to many people it was wrong for a pastor to be interested in these type of things. You know, so my public interest, so you know, even even career ideas, professional ideas, business ideas, I felt that they had to be governed by my call. Um, which is very, very damaging in a lot of ways, or at least it was for me, because one of the things it did was it really took away my, my, my own sense of value and what I thought about the world and what I wanted to do. Um, so it really could never be, Durante, do you want to do this? Is, are you called to do this? You know, and as a pastor, are you going to be able to do this? Because your call as a pastor comes first, you know, and so... That's one of the ways. But then it's also the leading of the spirit, which which means um, and, and, and you would get this question a lot. Anytime you'd, you'd want to do something, would the spirit lead you to do that? Is God telling you to do that? You know, you got to be made. You have to make sure that you are being led by the spirit of God. So this this definitely impacted my interest, because then anything that I was interested in, that just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for me that I was interested in it. My personal interest was not valuable. It was whether or not God could get anything out of that, 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 that would be the determining factor. So if, if this is something that for whatever reason, God has a plan for, then I'll be interested in this, you know? 
And and the more I even say these things kind of out loud, it's like, wow, I was really, you know, I was a part of a, I had programmed myself into this indoctrination pretty fiercely. Um, but then there's this other one, uh, just this, this commitment to Christ. And so there was always, and I don't know for those of you who weren't in the black church, if this was ever an issue for you, um, this, not this issue, but this particular saying, there was a saying that was said a lot. And that was only what you do for Christ will last. And it was actually based on a song. That song may have been by commission. I'm not sure. But only what you do uh, for Christ for, uh, will last, which was which was loosely based on a scripture in Second Corinthians chapter four, I believe. Uh, but it was this idea that it was useless. It was a waste of time to work on things that 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 Christ um, that that was not built on Christ or that was not about Christ or didn't reflect your commitment to Christ, because if you did those things, those things would not um, would not last, um, which which let's take this a step further. That also kind of inculcates you with this idea that it is useless to work on things that don't last, which is mind blowing to me because we have evidence to the contrary. As a matter of fact, I am at a, a, a place where I realize I don't need everything I do to last. I just need to be able to learn from the things that don't. And for me, that's just a much, much healthier perspective. I'd be curious to see how some of you feel about that. Now that I realize these things, and of course, I deconverted back in 2014 and have been silently living as, as an atheist for the past 10 years. Uh, but on this side of things, I've definitely been able to explore my interest a little more. And not feeling any shame of interest. So, so one of those benefits, a shame for my interest. So one of the benefits that I've had by embracing critical thinking, which I do sometimes kind of use the, 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 the idea of atheism in this clickbaity way to say how atheism changed, changed my life. But, you know, I, I hope my subscribers are, are, are smart enough to understand that what it is that really saved my life was critical thinking. You know, and so it's not just on this side of atheism, because I know plenty of atheists who did not arrive at that conclusion necessarily by critical thinking. I know plenty of atheists who don't practice critical thinking in other areas. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying that as a um, as a denigration. The truth of the matter is we're, we're not we're not 100 percent critical thinking. I don't care you know what, what you say. We're we're who's he, what's he, who God's he. We're, we're all over the place. And, and that's why I do my best to sound the alarm on superstition, not that I think that we're going to overnight stop being superstitious, but to really begin to call our attention to just how superstitious we are, so that in the very least, we will stop placating these more harmful superstitions. And there are quite, there are quite a few of them. Um, and the truth of the matter is, once you make something sacred, you kind of make it untouchable. And once you make something untouchable, you make it you 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 make it um, free of critique, and that's dangerous, you know. And and I think that's one of the reasons superstition has been, particularly religious and political superstition, um, has been able to to to, to um, get away with so much, or we've been able to get away with so much with it, um, is because they often exist in these areas that are super sacred. This is either, th these are either based off of the beliefs of, 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 of my God, you know, these are God beliefs, or these are political beliefs, or these are my forefathers. And I'm like, I really don't give a damn about what anybody thought about the world a hundred years ago as a, or 400 years ago, um, as it pertains to determining how we approach the world today. I think we can use information today and determine what we should be doing. And, and, and when I kind of researched the founding fathers of this particular country, um, they seem to have that same or, or similar ideology that, that governments should grow with the people. Um, but anyway, so the big point is it, it's not necessarily atheism that saved my life. It's critical thinking. And of course, critical for me, critical thinking led me to atheism. So on this side of critical thinking, I no longer have a distinction between my public interest and my, my, my private interest. I'm just interested in things. And if you don't like the things that I'm interested in, that's on you, you know? Um, I no longer feel a need to hide certain interests or or to 
too selectively. Oh, I don't know if I could talk about them, but with this one, you know, I can talk about it. If you're not interested, you'll say, yeah, I'm not interested in that. Hopefully you'll say that. Um, and, and then we'll move on. Well, even if you don't say it, I, I am kind of good at paying attention to social cues. And so I'd be like, yeah, they ain't really interested. Um, but as of now, like I'm me unapologetically and I'm willing to update at any given time with new information. So I don't I don't feel that need for shame. You know, if there's something I'm interested in and, and somebody's like, oh, Durante, that's actually bad. And then they can actually show me some information and I come to the agreement that, yeah, oh, yeah, this is bad and I don't want to do this. Then I know that I have that type of flexibility in, in who I am as a person. So I don't feel the need to hide you know, anything that I'm interested in anymore. And, and and now, and the beauty about that for me is that I'm interested in a myriad of things. Like I realize now, like that was, that was a ma major struggle and, and was part of my mental health issues uh, in, in ministry is that I was suppressing so much of myself and, and not allowing myself to really venture out and explore this world around me. And now I'm just like, oh, man, I can be interested in all of these things. And I don't have to feel like being interested in one of these things is a threat to a is a threat to my interest in another one of these things. It's all just just my interest, I, you know, and that is weird because there was this. Oh, no. Well, if you're interested in this, it's going to it's going to, you know, maybe taint, you know, your 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 purity or whatever. So it's, it's all types of um, well, bullshit. That's just the best way I can say that, you know. Um, but yeah, so there's no longer that that type of distinction. My interest are just my interest. Um, but there, there also um, what I enjoy, what what whatever I enjoy that doesn't cause harm to others, I give myself permission to be interested in. Um, th 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 these are my inter my in my interests are no longer governed by this ideology of a calling of God or leading of the Spirit or even a commitment to Christ. My interests are no longer really governed by anything. Um, outside of me and my understanding of, of the world around me that I am interacting with, you know, in real time. Um, so, so therefore, you know, my interests are governed by, you know, new parameters now. And those parameters are whatever I enjoy that doesn't cause harm to others. It, you know, um, yeah, as long as it doesn't cause harm to others and I enjoy it, it is qualified as an interest for me. Uh, but then also, and this was probably the biggest one for me, and it was one that, um, that I didn't expect. I did not expect this this to happen, or did I? Because there was another. I was reading a lot of books when I was deconverting, and mind you, they weren't theological books. Um, they weren't books about the Bible. I'd already done that. Um, there, I was getting a more interest in in business world, uh, in, in the business world, in the corporate world. So I was reading some of those books, um, and realizing that I actually had a better understanding of things than I thought I did, and I had actually been fighting my own understanding. And so th th there were quite a few things that came with that. Um, but one of the new things that I've kind of instituted for my life, as far as my parameters for my interest, is just anything that beneficially aligns with my self-interest and helps me build the life that I think I want, that th that qualifies as a viable interest for me. So that, that really, those really, those two things are really what, what guides my interests now or what governs my interests? Do I enjoy it? And, 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 and does it not cause harm to anybody else? And then, yeah, I'm, I'm free to be interested in that. So one of the things I'm interested in, in interested in is computer programming. It doesn't har harm anybody. I can be interested in, um, I'm interested in astrophysics. Don't ask me a bunch of questions about it. That interest is still early. I mean, it's a few years deep, but I, I can't speak to that. I'm interested in quantum physics, um, quantum mechanics, um, classical physics, um, so many different things. But I'm also interested in music. Um, I'm, I'm interested um, in uh, psychedelics. I really am. I haven't tried any yet, but godly, this is, it, it's, it's fascinating to me. Um, and I don't feel any shame of that. I'm interested in how different cultures live and, and how they experiment. I'm interested... I'm so interested in so many different things now. And, and, it, and, and I know that that may not be major for a lot of people, but for me, especially when I thought about it today, I'm like, man, this has been incredibly uh, liberating. And, and then it's, I'm not even closed off to new interest, right? It's just like, it's, it's like being able to breathe and just being able to live without being worried that someone else, and there it is, 
um, that someone else is going to judge you as unworthy or unqualified because you have an interest that doesn't align with whatever they think about the world. And, and that goes deeper than superstition because it's not just superstition that, that makes, that gives people opinions about the things that other people are interested in. We're, we're an opinionated species. I think that's just kind of like the byproduct of language. You know, you, you have words to say, so you say them. Um, but you know, regardless of any of that, I know it's not even about the superstition. I no longer care. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It doesn't matter if other people are like, oh no, you know, mm. if, 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 I've given my parameters. If my parameters are solid, I really don't care if anybody else, you know, doesn't agree. And and I'm not going to shame them for not agreeing. Like that's wow, critical thinking has been so liberating for me. Like I used to have so many people living in my head of just being concerned about, "Oh, how are they going to take this? How are they going to take this?" And I'm like, "Oh, dude, you don't have to be a psychic. You know, you know, however they're going to take it is however they're going to take it. And you can respond to it at that moment as a mature adult. And if they don't respond like a mature adult, you can let them kick rocks. You know, that, you know, for me, and I know some people don't like when I talk about the power of choice, but to me, that's just been the power of choice. Um, That was one of the things I got back from, you know, from my hiatus on the other side is, you know, it's like, oh, snap, like, my life is a, is a byproduct of my choices. My consequences are a byproduct of my choices. And a lot of the things that I was complaining about in, in life were consequences of my choices, things that I didn't. Um, and, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just always like, oh, you had done something bad. Sometimes it was just literally I didn't do something helpful. I didn't do something productive, productive because I was too busy, busy praying, trying to make sure that I was doing what it took to protect my calling and to be led by the spirit and to be committed to Christ. Okay. So I didn't want to make this too long. I hope I've said something in this, this little spiel that was valuable. Again, this is me just sharing some things that have been on my mind based off of my experiences. Uh, if you found this valuable, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, consider commenting on the video, join our community, volunteer in our community and check out our merch. And as I've started saying now, if you know anybody who, who you think would benefit from this, share it with them. All right. That's all I have for now. Until next time, keep rising, stay progressive and stay beautiful. If you can, I'll let you.